In the following code excerpt, you might remember this from our homework three. This is our interpreter of expressions, very simple expressions, only has built-in functions. And what we can do with this code is basically evaluate numerical expressions. So let's see our first example. What if we run our eval exp? So if you remember this, you might be concerned with what I did here because you might be thinking the input should be an R number and not just the number directly, right? We are using an AST to represent the various va values. We're not just using record values directly. So record literals actually are surrounded in a structure to be able to distinguish between what is our data, the program's data, and what is the programming language that we're using this data. So if we try to run this example, so let me save this. I will run this, lecture 29. And I see that I have an unknown expression and I get number 10. So I hit this branch exactly because this is not an R column number, it's actually a number. So perhaps we want to run our number 10 and this would fix it. So another way, an e perhaps a better way to fix this problem is actually introduce a contract, right? We might want to say, oh, in this particular function, it takes an R expression and it returns a number or a, a boolean, right? Oh, in this case, it's just number. Let's just say a number. So now, if we run this again, everything is fine. But if we run this with an invalid input, I get a contract error that is saying, it's expecting an expression and I gave it as a 10 and it tells me even where where does it say that's here in line 21 exactly where we have the error okay so with contracts it's a good way to kind of prevent things that are not of a given domain or given type but we might be interested in not all numbers, right? In particular, let's look at what happens if we try to divide one by zero. So as we know, division is not defined for when the denominator is zero. So if I try to run this code, which is just dividing one by zero, I should get an exception, or should I not? What do you think it's gonna happen? So what's going to happen is this expression is going to be evaluating down to the division operator, right? And then each of these arguments are going to be evaluated down to numbers. So you're going to have one and zero divided by one divided by zero. So it's the same as running. It's going to be the same as running. So we get a contract violation. Oh, we need to comment this out. Not okay. So now we run it again. And we get a division by zero, right? Because doing this is not okay. The kind of error we get is the same as if I were to divide 1 by 0 directly. If I run, I get exactly the same division by 0. So what is happening is that my, the implementation details of how I implemented division are actually leaking out to the user. 
and we should somehow be able to handle with errors a bit more gracefully. So, first we need to define whether this is an error at all. Maybe we want to constrain the input and never even allow, perhaps we even want to disallow division, or we want to change how division operates, right? But one thing that we should be mindful when we're designing an API or a framework is that our implementation errors, the bugs that we, the designer, create should be visible to the designer alone, but it should be very visible. And that's why it's useful to use contracts, right? Because for contracts, in a contract, if I ever return So instead of returning a number, let's say I return a string foo, I'm actually violating the contract I defined. So it would be great if I could catch this in development quite easily. So if I do our number 10, now this should be good, but I actually did a design bug and I get a contract exception. I get that I broke my own contract, which means my implementation of eval exp is wrong according to the contract I designed. So this safeguard is really important and, sh and is something that you guys should be, this, this um, culture of writing code that when you did something wrong, it should break very loudly in development. That's something you really want to, to be mindful of and practice as much as you can. So, oops. so if this is an implementation error, only the developer of that API should be, should care about that and it should be very explicit. But if it's a user error, you don't want to leak out the internal state of your program, right? You don't want your, the, your client to know how, how the logic works behind, because you can have security errors. It's a great way to get, um, you know, security problems in your, in your tool. So you really want to make sure that whenever you have exceptional behavior, it has to be, you need to have to have a firewall that protects you from, if I did something wrong and it's my own implementation, I should see it during development. Otherwise, I need to handle the error gracefully and not, cr and not show details about how I implemented my own algorithm. So, how do we do this? We'll, start, we'll see that in the next video.